Sammy Blay, and Jesper Bratt for Eric Carlson. This guy wants us to trade Conrad to Vancouver for Pedersen and Bozer? Oh, I can see why you commented with your burner account. Not happening. What's going on, guys? Captain Conrad is staying, and welcome back to your Quebec Nordiques franchise mode. But before we get into the video, before I even touch anything on the controller, before I even simulate one more day, we have to give the biggest shout out I've ever given to Trevor Steenenberg, who created this incredible Google Doc sheet for the Quebec Nordiques. He has the all-time record versus Quebec and Montreal. He has every player we took in the expansion draft. He has every player we selected in the NHL entry draft. Look at the detail on this. He has every player we've ever traded for. Team awards, team record, playoffs. This guy is like the official team statistician. This guy blew me away with this. I mean, it's one thing to post a comment or make some fan art, but this is going above and beyond. So shout out to you, man. I really appreciate this. And it's actually really going to help me out because I have a terrible memory with what episode we traded who in, what year we drafted this guy in, how much we signed for this guy in free agency. So if I ever need to, I can go back to this Quebec Nordiques uh, little stat page he has. It's kind of like an encyclopedia that keeps getting updated with all the information for the franchise mode, but it's not even that. He goes into like first overall picks, second overall picks. He goes into every single award, who won what award in what year. It's crazy, man. So seriously, thank you so much for that, dude. That's awesome. I'm going to be using that a lot. I have it pinned on my computer, so I'm looking at it all the time, but that is like the coolest thing ever absolute legend. But now finally back to the video. We are 8-2-0 in our last 10. Last episode we started off year number 3. We're 16-8-0. We started off a little bit slow and then we made a few line changes and that kind of set things straight and now we are well on our way to hopefully another playoff run. 16-8-0, uh, 8-2-0 in our last 10 but we have to make a trade and that trade is going to involve Sammy Niku. And I think I'm going to try and upgrade our fourth line left wing. I like Nick Patan. It's not like he's hurting the team, but I would really like a grinder or a power forward on this fourth line to play alongside Adam Lowry and Ilya Makayev, who are both two-way forwards. I'd like a grinder, a power forward... I'd like someone in there, someone like a Ryan Reeves type situation. Someone that, you know, if the bell needs to be answered, we can't rely on Conrad Stastny all the time, even though he racks up penalty minutes. I'd rather have him on the ice than in the penalty box. So let's get someone to maybe take that load off of Conrad Stastny and throw him on the fourth line left wing. I think we've all really decided that Ty Smith is a better option on the third pairing defense with Adam Fox. Now, unfortunately, for Adam Fox. I don't think he's going to grow anymore. Uh, there's not really a whole lot you can do. Players like him just don't grow in franchise mode, unfortunately. I have not seen Adam Fox get over an 82 overall, or even like an 81. I think he's been 81 every single time. So uh, with the addition of Morgan Riley and Hampus Lindholm, that's all good to go. Nasty Nas, Adam Larson, Ty Smith, and Adam Fox. That's the top six we're rolling with. And we have to trade Sammy Niku, and we're going to see if we can trade Niku and Nick Patan for a solid fourth line left winger. Let's see what's out there. I'm looking for a grinder, looking for someone to punch some faces. We might be able to get a pick as well because Mr. Niku, he actually has a decent amount of trade value. So we might be able to squeeze something else out of here. But let me have a look what's around the league. I'm looking for a tough guy. Let's see what's out there. So instead of looking around every single player in the NHL, let's look at which players are grinders. Now, Max Lafleur is a grinder. Grinder? He's not a grinder. I made him a playmaker. Same with Sakic. No, Sakic was a grinder. Maybe Lafleur was a grinder. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Maybe Lafleur is a grinder. I don't think I made him as a grinder, but he is not playing like a grinder. 26 goals in 24 games. Keep the change. Jujar Kara is not a bad option. He's a big dude, six foot four, two fourteen. Anton Roussel, they just paid a first round pick for him. They're not gonna trade him. Uh, Garnet Hathaway, Dustin Brown's not a bad option. I mean, he's making a trillion dollars. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. He's actually off that contract now. 1.5 million for two years. That's pretty fair. We can also have a look at power forwards as well, but that's kind of 
of all that's out there. I'm looking for someone 80 plus, that's for sure. Maybe even an enforcer if the right player is out there. So there's 233 power forwards in the NHL. Conrad Stastny obviously being the best. Uh, Yassi Kazu, Yager, Dubois, obviously all these guys are way too high overall. We want someone 81 to 82-ish overall, like a Trent Frederick, that's not bad. Patty Maroon, Clem Costin, all right, I'd love to get me a Clem Costin. He's probably too good for the fourth line, but that is an option. Kylock Pozo, Adam Ernie might not be a bad option. He's cheap. We don't need to shoot for the moon with this player. We can go get like Jake Vertanen or someone uh, who's a power forward. We could go look at him. Uh, Tage Thompson is another one who's a young guy. Most of these guys are like third liners. I don't want to. I don't want to bury a guy who still has some potential. I don't really want to bury a guy that has a decent amount of potential. Like someone like Max Jones, I would never throw on the fourth line. But a guy like Brendan Lemieux is kind of exactly what we're looking for. A shit disturber, someone who's going to kill penalties. And I mean, he's actually decent. He's 25 years old, 79 overall. He's kind of perfect for that role on the fourth line left wing. Just from what I'm looking here, Brendan Lemieux kind of seems like the best option. There's only seven enforcers in the NHL. Actually, there's not even one enforcer in the NHL. Okay, well, that could change with some potential players in the upcoming draft. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But wow, okay, only seven enforcers and only one has an NHL contract. Yeah, hate to see it. How did they sign Capocaco for only 4.4 million? For five years? What a steal! Oh my god, get this guy a better agent. Are you kidding me? Jesus, he should be looking at like the five or six range, but I mean, he's only going to be 25 when his contract's up. He's going to make big money. Interesting. I mean, we can help out the New York Rangers here by absorbing the contract of Milan Lucic, but obviously we're just going to bury him in the minors. And then they pay an additional second. That seems like a smart trade. However, I think the AI is going to say no to this because the AI is dumb. Uh, but this does make complete sense for the New York Rangers. Get that off the books. Uh, will this go through? Trade rejected, even though that probably should go through. That's annoying. So I tried this with a few draft picks, but I don't think it's going to work out. We're probably just going to trade Sammy Niku straight up for Brendan Lemieux. We're also going to see if we can squeeze this, I guess, C-level prospect out of the New York Rangers organization. Levi with two E's, Altonen with two A's. Levi Altonen. What a name. 5'9", 164. He's a little guy, uh, but he's a fifth rounder. Why not take a chance on him? 20 years old. This should go through. Trade rejected. The value isn't there whatsoever? What do you mean, bro? What are you talking about? That value is completely there. All right, let's try it without everything. One for one, Niku for Brendan Lemieux. This should go through, very similar contracts. There you go. I tried to overcomplicate it. Well, you know what, it is what it is. That's fine, we did a one for one deal. The trade is one for one. Brendan Lemieux, welcome to Quebec. All right, baby, we are all good to go. Brendan Lemieux, new fourth line left wing, 6'1", 210, bull in a china shop. We got six foot five Adam Lowry, and then six Six foot two Ilya Mikhaev. What I would really, really like is for us to get a plus three, a plus four, maybe even a plus five on the line chemistry. Now I've messed around with it a little bit. I've done a previous franchise mode where I've ended up getting one plus five. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like two way forward playmaker sniper. I could be wrong, but let me know if you guys have had any sort of history with getting plus five, even a plus three. I would love to get because I seem to kind of top out of like a plus one. I'd love to get even a plus two, plus three out there. So that's what we're going to look forward to in the off season, all that good stuff. But let's go here. Game number one. It's actually game number two, but I had to stop the recording and this is actually the next day. In the previous clip you saw we were before the Chicago Blackhawks game, but there was a scheduled power outage in my current area and I didn't want the power to go out while I was recording because I know that can corrupt a file. So I thought I'd play it safe. I took the weekend and I just thought we'll pick it up on Monday. I was recording on Sunday night and I was like, I don't want to risk it. So here we are. It's technically the second game, but the first game you guys are going to see against the New Jersey Devils. And if I saw that right, they are, what are they? They're one and eight or something in their last 10. Yeah, one, eight and 
one. So they are struggling, and we are on fire. 8-2-0 in our last 10. A tale of two opposite teams right now. In the poutine place, Brendan Lemieux making his home debut. Fans are going to love this guy. He's going to be a hometown favorite, that's for sure. Period. Number one. And it's one nothing. And it's Philip. Don't know how to say his name. Period. Number two. Two nothing, baby. Jesper Bratt on the power play. I changed up the power play as well. I ended up putting Nasty Nas on the power play. And I took Adam Fox off. I feel like, obviously, Nasty Nas has a little bit higher of a potential than Adam Fox. So let's give him the power play minutes. And we have a 2 nothing lead here. Shots are dead even. Four minutes left. Wait, don't say it. Don't. No, you said it. Someone said it. That's the X-Tech jinx. Someone was thinking shut out. I'm sorry, UC Sorrow. Someone did it. I don't know who it was. It was probably you, Mike with the blue shirt on, what are you doing? Unfortunately, UC Soros gets the shutout snapped. You just absolutely hate to see it. But we have some important games coming up here. We got the Rangers and the Montreal Canadiens, two teams I definitely want to slow sim with. And why not, you know, we'll go ahead and slow sim this Islanders game. Thank you very much, Long Island. Up against the wings here, and then we're gonna go say what's up to Long Island as we get a trade off for Sammy Vatten and look at that contract no thank you another win baby that's four in a row make that five six seven eight wins in a row the boys are buzzing right now eight wins in a row up against matty barzell's old team this is the first time we are going to see a yager brother as well which is always very exciting they're eight and 17 we should walk out of the barclays center or wherever the hell they're playing with two points here period number one and it's one nothing Hampus Lindholm shorthanded on Quinn Bossy. Yes, that's right. Hampus Lindholm shorthanded. Period number two. All right, one nothing. The shorthanded goal is holding up right now. Shots are dead even at 21 apiece. And Taze, no, not that Taze. Devin Taze, not related. He scores on Askarov. We start Askarov against a poor team. That makes sense. Let's get some run support for the young Russian goalie, though. Come on. Come on. Get some run support here. Your shots are pretty even. Two minutes. Are we going into overtime? All right. If we go into a shootout, I'll slow sim. But I think it's going to end in overtime because Philip don't know how to say his name. Continues the winning streak. That is a huge win. That is nine straight. Nine wins in a row. The boys are buzzing. That's 40 points on the year. 21 wins. Boom. Beat the Flyers. 10 W's in a row. And we are up against the struggling Tampa Bay Lightning. Matty Barzell is a point per game player. We can't be slow simming every single game. I'll be here forever and I want to get a good chunk of simulation done. So we're going to go all the way up to the New York Rangers game here. Hopefully we can continue the winning streak against Tampa Bay and that's 11 in a row. Make it 12. Oh, that's a shootout loss. Still not a regulation loss and our first shootout loss or overtime loss of the regular season, which is pretty impressive. Calvin Picard, I don't need him even though he was just traded the other day in real life. 24-8-1, uh, 25-9-1. We are killing it. 8-3 to three, and then a 4-2 loss, unfortunately. But you know what? When you win 11 straight, you can afford to lose a game here and there. Hopefully, they're not all 7-1 to one losses like earlier against the Ottawa Senators. That sucks. But we bounce back with a win and then a loss and then a win. So we're kind of going back and forth, back and forth. A good test against the Stars, and that's an overtime win. Look at Ottawa, though. They're 34 and 6. No wonder they just kicked the hell out of us. Look at Bo Alfredson and Chubby over there just killing it. Oh my god, they're 34 and 6. Watch out for Ottawa. That's something I thought I'd never say. Looking for win number 30 against the Avs, and nope, two chances to get win number 30. That's four straight losses, and there's the 30th win. 30, 15, and 1. The return of Brendan Lemieux to the Big Apple. Obviously, Sammy Niku's first time playing his old team. Let's go, boys. They have a terrible record. I assume we should be starting Askarov here, but... It but you know what? It is the Big Apple. We might be starting UC Soros. Period number one. Let's go Brendan Lemieux. I'm going to say he gets an assist and two penalty minutes. That's what I'm going to say. An assist and a minor penalty. Let's see how he can match up against Sammy Niku. Period number one. And it's 2 nothing. Okay, Lias Anderson and Artemi Panarin. And we did start UC Soros. Period number two. 4 nothing. Tony D'Angelo and Bushnevik. We are getting pumped by the Rangers right now. 
Hopefully Sammy Niku doesn't find the back of the net. Maybe Brendan Lemieux is going to score here, but it looks like we're going to get shut out. You hate to see it. Maybe he at least got a minor penalty. Let's have a look. So as for the Rangers, uh, looks like Sammy Niku did not register a point. He had 16 minutes of ice and two shots. Now, what about Brendan Lemieux? That sucks to lose 4 nothing. That's not a good way to go out. Brendan Lemieux only played eight minutes, no penalty minutes, one hit. Didn't really do a whole lot, unfortunately. That sucks. We've actually ran into quite a few losses here. See, we lost four in a row, and then we win one, and we lose one. So hopefully we can bounce back against the Montreal Canadiens because that is a team you're definitely going to want to beat. And after the Rangers beat us, they trade their... They trade one of their best players. They trade Alex Petrangelo to Columbus for Alex Wenberg, a prospect and a first. That's a pretty decent haul for like a 33-year-old defenseman. And they offer us Jake McKay back, and I'm going to say no. Now, since I'm terrible at remembering the all-time record between the Habs and the Quebec Nordiques, I can go over to the handy-dandy little master spreadsheet. I don't even know what to call it. The God Book of the Quebec Nordiques. Shout out to you, Trevor. If I look at it here, Quebec has played Montreal five times and we are three and two so looking to go four and two here even though they've scored more overall goals than us at 21 to 19 I'm feeling a big win here I'm feeling like going four and two against the Montreal Canadiens we're in the Bell Center they're struggling this year 16 at 26 and five still this is not a team you should take lightly they have Max Lafleur. last time we checked he was a goal per game so let's not take this team lightly let's go period number one and it's 1-0 and Jonathan Drouin, he scores a goal period number 2 okay, 2-1, two, there's Max Lafleur, and there's Matty Barzell getting on the score sheet, cutting the lead to 1, but Lafleur gets his second of the night and is Montreal going to tie up the all-time record at 3 apiece? We have been losing lately, after winning 11 straight we've kind of hit a rough patch here I think we're almost out of December, but it has been rough and we lose 3-1 to the Montreal Canadiens Canadians. We're actually well out of December right now. We are in January headed to February here, so we better start picking our stuff up. I mean, 30-17-1 is a pretty good record, and I'm glad that we got those points early, like I mentioned earlier, but still... Um, I don't want to be dropping games like this. That's another one we lost, and then we bounce back with a 6-2 win. So going into February here, it's going to be the trade deadline. I don't think we're going to make any moves. I think we're just going to power on right through it. The scoring seems to be down a little bit on our team, but Matty Barzell is a point-per-game player, 93 overall. Doesn't look like Conrad's going to hit the 70 goals like he did last year. I mean, third year in the league, he's not quite a point-per-game player player. I think I was expecting a little bit more to be honest with you, but maybe I could change some things up. It looks like our secondary scoring is really drying up. I mean, I mean, for guys like Philip don't know, 34 in 50 isn't bad. I mean, this isn't terrible, but you look at Conrad and Matty Barzell, they're really, really carrying the weight here. Uh, Sammy Blay, 38 points. Morgan Riley with 37. That's awesome. I might be able to change some things up here. I might be able to move some things around to do since coming over. Uh, he's played one more game in Quebec and has one less point. So it's pretty even. He does have that plus one, uh, 29 shots. He's shooting the puck more and he's got a game winning goal, which is awesome. Lucas Raymond, only 15 points. So I'd really like to get some more secondary scoring here. Nasty Nas has 11 points in 50 games. Again, it's not all about the points, but it would be nice if we got some more run support. I think that's why we're losing the last couple of games here. But 9 and 2 for Askarov and then 22 and 16 for UC Soros. Now, I want to check out two things, and I was looking at this off camera, and I thought it was a little bit weird, because we have two players in the CHL that probably shouldn't be in the CHL. One, obviously, being Arthur Kaliev. We know he should be in the American Hockey League. He is 75 overall, I'm pretty sure. Or, yeah, so he's 74 overall, probably just having a ridiculous year down there with the Hamilton Bulldogs.
Suggs, 56 points in 32 games. It's not bad. But the other player, and one that we might have some sort of a goaltending controversy with, that is Tynan. He's 80 overall at 19 years old. I drafted this guy not expecting him to be really, you know, anything super special. A second round pick is pretty good, but he's grown into an 80 overall without playing a professional hockey league game yet, which is crazy. He's ready to jump into the NHL right now. And he's 20 and 8 with three shutouts. So he's way too good for the OHL. Unfortunately, I can't call him up until next year, but maybe in the future we might have some sort of a goaltending controversy. It could be Tynan's going to push Askarov for the backup role next year. And UC Saros, I mean, he's not really playing super fantastic. He could be out as well. Last year he was doing so good, but I don't know what happened here. 22 and 16. It's not bad, but I'd like to see some better goaltending and some more secondary scoring from the squad. All right, so I'm going to move Jaden Schwartz down and move Sammy Blay up. Uh, we're going to put that there. Everyone else, I can't really change anything up. Like, I would never do this. I would never put Lucas Raymond up there because that would just be playing Schwartz in a terrible position. Jesper Bratt is too good for the third line. I think we just need to get some better simulation, honestly. We might have been hitting a bit of a rough patch here. I mean, early on, we were killing it. We won 11 games straight. So what I'm going to do, just for fun, I'm going to do the little pimp out the trade block here. If you if you put your wants to your surplus, you are going to be getting a ton of trade offers. And yes, it's a little bit annoying. I, I pretty much only recommend doing this exactly at the trade deadline month. If you do this for the entire year, it's going to get very annoying getting the same trade offers over and over because the AI will send you the same bullshit over and over and over. So we're only going to do it for this month. I'm not saying I'm going to make a move and really... I wouldn't say anyone is super safe. I think there's maybe four players on our team that are basically untouchables, and I'm not super opposed to trading anyone else. So let's see what the AI is gonna offer us in the next month. All right, the first line has been changed, and we now have a pimped out trade block. We should be getting a decent amount of offers here. Now, is there any games I wanna slow sim, any real important ones? Uh, it doesn't really look like it. We can go say what's up to the Sedins in Vancouver after we go up against the Sharks. And here come the trades, baby. A first for Jesper Bratt. Like, these trades might be good in the long run, but Jesper Bratt is an 84 overall player making less than $2 million. There's no way I'm going to trade this guy. So we're going to say no to that. And it will be a little bit slower on the simulation thing because the trades are going to be coming hot and heavy. Uh, Montreal gets rid of Anisimov in a fourth for a first. It's a pretty good haul, and there's back-to-back -back wins, and the Sharks have fired Skylar Connolly, so after we beat them, they fired their head coach. Uh, Philip Deneau for a first, a prospect, and Corey Crawford. Obviously, I'm not super interested in this, but I am interested in this prospect. What's he looking like? Uh, he's nothing special. I thought maybe he had a ton of trade value, but it's not really that great at all. So we've got two wins in a row here. Can we make it three? And we got pumped as we get offered Jonathan Quick and Evgeny Dadnov. No, thank you. Eight to four by the Boston Bruins. The trades are coming in big right now. Danny DeKaiser for Yan Masayak. So that's just basically a cap dump, it looks like. Now the simulation is going to slow down here. Uh, JT Miller goes back to the Rangers for Tony D'Angelo. Jim Benning, what are you doing? I know D'Angelo is decent, but god damn, that is a yikes trade right there. Don't love that trade. Sammy Blay and Jesper Brad for Eric Carlson. I mean, <laughs> I can already see the people saying, get Carlson, what are you doing? Oh my God, get Carlson. I'm not about to trade Sammy Blay and Jesper Bratt for a 31-year-old who's making 11.5 for the next five years. Now, you can go hang out in San Jose. We don't need Eric Carlson. Um, we might see him get traded, actually, though. Uh, first in a prospect. I don't really want to trade these guys. Again, I'm just putting it out there just to see maybe if anyone comes at us with a depth offer someone maybe get a third maybe get a nice third line score maybe we'll think about making a move plus it's just always fun to get trade offers up against the Sedin twins Elias Pedersen Quinn Hughes and Brock Besser with the Vancouver Canucks let's go in our home arena and it's one nothing and it's Wayne Train Simmons period number two okay two two we tie it up Conrad and Matty Barzell doing what they do best put the team on their back Bo Horvat the captain of the Canucks gets a 
goal for them. Both captains have goals. An assistant captain has two goals, Matty Barzell, but Elias Pedersen comes right back. Probably rocking an assistant captain over there in Vancouver. Shots are pretty even. Power play for us. Power play. Come on, boys. Come on, guys. Let's be a big two points here. They're out shooting us a little bit, pulling away in the shot department, going into overtime. Are we going into a shootout? Let's go. Here comes the man who has the tying goal in the game, and I think that's Askarov between the pipes. He says no, or that's UC Soros. Here comes Conrad Stastny, blacked out visor, does the leg kick, and how does that one go in? Scores on Thatcher Demko, what a weird one. Here comes Oscar, here comes Oscar Sedin, number 93, tries to go top glove, and UC Soros, he says no. Matty Barzell's got two in the game, looking for the unofficial hat trick, and Thatcher Demko says no with the glove. We get a save here and we win. Quinn Hughes leg kick and he beats him glove side. Third straight shot they've went glove side. Now we can really put it on here with a big goal. Number 17. I don't even know who that is. But that's a big poke check. And we're going on to round number four. Brock Besser likes to shoot and there's another poke check. They're coming fast and furious here. Morgan Riley the big free agent acquisition and another poke check. Okay. The poke checks keep coming. Here comes Bo Horvat, the captain. He's got a goal, a little toe drag, and what a blocker save. All right, we need a goal here. We need a goal from Sammy Blay. Let's go, baby. The Quebec-born kid, another poke check. What the hell? He is furious with the poke checks. Here comes the other Sedin, and oh my god, he just beat him clean. What are you doing? So out of position right there. Yes, for Brat, we need a goal, buddy. We need a big goal. And he tries the Conrad Stastny. That's just bowling your way through the goalie. Unfortunately, that doesn't work, and we lose a marathon in the shootout to the Vancouver Canucks. All right, let's get some simulation done. After losing four games straight, we could make a trade with the Coyotes. Uh, first, Kevin Ball and Patrick Maroon for Jaden Schwartz. Um... See, what I was hoping, my kind of plan was with Jaden Schwartz, is that we would offload him at the trade deadline. But, unfortunately, I don't think Lucas Raymond is ready to make that jump. My initial plan was that Lucas Raymond would be 83, 84 overall around this time, and we could bring him up. However, unfortunately, he's not quite there yet, so I think we're going to hang on to Jaden Schwartz. The first would be okay, but I think we're going to hang off here. But losing four straight after winning two straight, that's never good. Kadri for Larson, Lemieux, and Kaliev. No thank you. 99% of these trades we're going to say no to, but I'm looking for that 1% and it's not Jonathan Taze. No thank you. Up against Jonathan Taze and the Blackhawks and they hand us another L. We're taking L's left and right here. Up against the Devils, Jesper Bratt and Mikhaev for a first. No thank you. Snap the losing streak. There you go. Two straight wins. Rolov, he must have a ton of trade value plus a first. Obviously we're going to say no. I don't really know what kind of trade we're looking for, but I don't think it's this. Prince and Lawrence. So I wouldn't mind getting rid of Patan, or Patan's not that bad to hang on to either because he's actually good for the American Hockey League team, but uh, what's his Lawrence guy look like? He's undrafted, defensive defenseman, 21 years old, and Prince. He looks like he's the big piece to get Ty Smith. So again, we're just going to say no to that. That's three wins in a row. Looking to make it four against Philly and another trade. Uh, Boston Austin offered us Frolov, and then we said no, so they shipped him over to Nashville. There you go. Chad Johnson on waivers. We don't need a backup goalie. No thank you. A first for Philip Deneau. No, no, no. Hopefully we can get some more wins, and there is an overtime loss. But it is still a point. 35-22-3. Thank God that we won so many games early on, especially that 11-game winning streak, because we would kind of be screwed right now. I don't want to trade Jesper Bratt. Keep the wins coming. 7-0 loss. Oh boy, what are we doing? I don't want to fire our coach or anything because we're in a playoff position. You don't want to do that, but we are struggling big time. The Vancouver Canucks just got D'Angelo, and they want to ship him off for Adam Larson. Um, Sven Berchi. Okay, this could be interesting. So D'Angelo, he's not that good, is he? He's 82 overall, so he's not terrible. He's actually quietly having like a career year. But uh, Adam Larson has one year left, Adam Fox. Sven Berchi's not a bad third-line scorer. 30 points in 60 games, it's not terrible. 
3.3 for two years. What can we do here? Honestly, our third line is really sucking. It's not doing good at all. Nick Bugstad is, I mean, he had a much better year last year. He had close to 40. I think, yeah, he had 41 points. He's got 21 right now. Looking at Jesse Pujarvi, that's not really working out. He's, what, I think he's got, like, less than 10 points on the entire year. Oh, sorry, he's got 11 points. My bad. But a minus 14. What if we just traded Jesse Pujarvi for Sven Berchi? Like, what if we just did that? Maybe Sven Berchi and a pick? Would that go through? Probably not. Berchi's got too much trade value. That might work. Berchi's locked up. Um, I mean, we know Pugliarvi, but that low elite, he's probably not going to grow. It's not really working out here in Quebec, unfortunately. We're going to send him to his third team in a couple years. Sven Berchi might not be bad, but now that I'm kind of thinking that we might be able to move Jesse Pugliarvi, I'm going to see if there's another third line scorer that we can go after, because we are, honestly, we're not doing good right now, and if we continue at this point, like, do we even, like, are we even in a playoff spot? We are, but not by a whole lot. Three points behind the team, which has beat us 7 nothing. So, yeah, we need to figure something out here. One last game before the trade deadline. And it looks like Columbus gets Michael Furland for a first. Okay, there you go. And one more day. Uh, yes, for Pratt for a first. No. And there's a 4-1 to one win. So right at the trade deadline, what are we going to do, if anything? Jake McCabe gets moved once again. Uh, no more trade offers coming our way. We are in a playoff spot, but with the way we're playing lately, I'm not feeling super confident. I would love to get a guy like Jonas Donskoy for the third line. He's the perfect third line winger. He's got 52 points this year, so he's having a career year. I would love to get this guy. Now, we might be able to get it done with Pujarvi, a nothing prospect, and a pick. The thing is, we should probably cash in on Jesse Pujarvi. I don't think he's going to grow. Yeah, it's a cool story, but I honestly, I can't see him going anywhere anytime soon. So if we could pull the trigger on this, I would love to make this move go through will this go through just as is trade rejected so i knew i'm gonna have to add a little bit that's fine honestly i always like just to start a little bit low and if i have to add you know make it a third or a fourth whatever let's add a fifth and a seventh for this year for Jonas donskoy a nice little playoff rental one year left 3.9 who knows maybe we could bring him back trade rejected okay what if i made it just a fourth and a seventh or straight up just a fourth from nashville Will that go through the extra pick? Come on, guys. Don't do this to me. How about a fourth and a sixth? Come on. It's always like sometimes you can add a sixth and they'll be like, oh, the value isn't there whatsoever. And then you can add a fifth and it'll be like, oh, just sweeten it just a touch. The AI is very interesting. Will this go through a fourth or fifth? Pujarvi for Donskoy. Trade rejected. What else do you want? The trade value seems pretty damn even to be honest with you. Seems like a lot to pay. The trade value is definitely in your favor. Trade rejected. I mean maybe they just don't want to get rid of Jonas Donskoy. I guess that's fair. Moving on. So we might get a bit of an upgrade here from the Montreal Canadiens. It's not quite the player I wanted. I wanted a guy who's mid, you know, 82, 83 overall, who's a bit of, who's kind of a bit more of a, a veteran. But if you look at the center position here in Montreal, Nick Suzuki has absolutely nowhere to grow. He's got behind him Max Domi, Tim Stutzel, Trevor Wong, Cockney Yemi, and Max Lafleur. So with that being said, they don't have a ton of wingers aside from Jonathan Drouin, I think we might be able to turn Nick Suzuki into a pretty damn good winger. Medium top six, he has 20 points on the year, so it is definitely an improvement. He's minus 27. He's got to get out. Of, he's got to get out of Montreal. We're making a trade with a rival. The first time this has happened in forever. Jesse Pugliarvi for Nick Suzuki, and of course we'll have a closer look at this as we slow sim games. But this is the trade that I want. Will this go through? trade rejected. I might have to throw some picks their way. Good old AI. What if I made it a fourth from Nashville? Throw some picks? Trade rejected. Okay. Okay, I'll throw another nothing prospect at you guys. Will this go through for Nick Suzuki? There you go. Finally. That guy was like 47 overall, so it really doesn't mean a whole lot to me, but there you go. Nick Suzuki, welcome to the squad. Originally, I wanted a veteran to go on that third line, but we are a young team, so 
let's keep it going with the young players. Nick Suzuki, welcome to Quebec. He goes from Montreal to Quebec. He's going to play with Lucas Raymond and Nick Bugestad. There you go, 22 years old, 20 points in his sophomore season. That's the trade we're going to make. Hopefully, it is going to work out. Like I said, we've been playing pretty lackluster the past month, month and a half. So hopefully, we can kickstart things. And do we have any more games against Montreal? We do on the second. So that's going to be something we're definitely going to have to look at. And we play the Rangers, of course, we do before that. So we will slow sim those two games. But Nick Suzuki, his first game with the Montreal Canadiens, making his home debut, doesn't have to travel a whole lot, comes over from Montreal, right into the Quebec Nordiques lineup. Kind of a trade I wasn't expecting to make, but both but it kind of made sense for both sides. Both players needed a change of scenery. Let's go, period number one, and it's two nothing for the Winnipeg Jets. Howard Chuck and Brendan Leipzig. Period number two, okay, two one. Leipzig gets another, but Conrad Stastny, he scores for us, and we're down three one. Come on guys, the home fans are getting restless. Adam Fox scores a big goal, but then Blake Wheeler comes right back. Honestly, they've dominated us for most of the game game. Adam Fox gets another one. And then Morgan Riley, three goals from our back end, but Nikolai Ehlers and then Lucas Raymond. The goals are coming fast and furious. What the hell is this third period? It's a 5-5 game, a goalie's worst nightmare. Are we going into overtime 5-5? Five five? Oh man, what's going to happen in OT? Come on, you can't let this game go to a shootout. You got to end it in overtime and we are going to a shootout and we lose, of course. This is why we can't have nice things, but we did get the extra point. A valiant effort from the Quebec Nordiques, but unfortunately it wasn't quite enough. Adam Fox getting the party started with two big goals. What a guy. Uh, so we'll slow him two more games before this video is all but over. A little bit of a long one here, but I'm hoping that we can string some wins together. There's one, and then there is a loss against the Hurricanes kind of seems like we win one, lose two, win two, lose one, lose two, win one. It's kind of annoying. Uh, and there it is again. We win one, and actually, wait, we win two, and then we lose one. So it's kind of like we can't really get a good momentum swing going. And right now, as of right now, we are currently out of a playoff spot. But those two wins might put us back in. There you go. So we are neck and neck with the Bruins. Every game is a must win at this point. Come on, guys. You can't be on the verge of missing the postseason. There you go. That's three, four wins in a row. That's a 9-5 to five win. Make it five wins. There you go. 92 points. Okay, we're still not... Still not secure, but we're in a much safer spot than we were before. The return of Sammy Niku and Brendan Lemieux. Let's go one last time in the Big Apple. Let's keep the winning streak alive. They have a terrible record. you got to win this one. Period number one. And it's 3 nothing, baby. Lucas Raymond. Philip don't know how to say his name. And Ty Smith. Period number two. Keep it going. 3 nothing. Make it 9 nothing. Okay, I'll settle with 5 nothing. Lucas Raymond with his second of the night from seven. Ice, and then Jesper Bratt makes it five to nothing. That is a shutout, and that is six wins in a row. Up against the Habs for the last time this year, hoping to make it a four and three all time record. Obviously, Nick Suzuki versus Jesse Poyarvi. Let's go, baby. First period, and it's one nothing, and it's Hampus Lindholm on Jonathan Bernier. Period number two. Okay, two one. Max Lafleur and Maddie Barzell, the first liners, are coming out to play. Come on, boys. Hold that lead. Get an insurance marker. Nick Suzuki. Come on, baby. You know you want to score on the Habs. You know you want to do it. 30 to 27 are the shots. We're holding on. I don't feel super comfortable with this lead. That's a five on three. And Ryan Paling, the Seattle Storm Bear legend. And then Ryan Strom. Back-to-back -back Ryans score for the Montreal Canadiens. And they steal a win. Now, we're trailing. We're three and four all time against the Montreal Canadiens. You hate to see it. Well, that sucks. They snap our win streak, but I don't care. I'm looking towards the postseason. I got bigger and better things than the Montreal Canadiens. Get out of here. 96 points. Um, it's getting tight. It's getting really tight. We need a win, and there's a loss. 
that is not great for our playoff hopes. Hold on. How are we looking right now? 93. If the Bruins win both of their games and we lose, we're in trouble. Um, and if Tampa wins, we're in trouble. We kind of have to win to solidify ourselves as a playoff team up against the Florida Panthers, who I believe have like 50 wins on the year. Let's do it. First period, 2-1. We started Askarov, and Felix Pox, the stinkiest man in the world, scores a goal for them. Conrad Stastny scores for us, period number two. Okay, we get a little bit closer, but they pull away with Michael Froelich. Boys, if we lose this game and Tampa and Boston win their games, we might not be a playoff team. Matty Barzell, this guy has been playing unbelievable. Only 18 shots, but we now have a tied hockey game. 30 shots to 19. Come on, boys. Pull out a miracle here. Matty Barzell, give me a hat trick, baby. Give me a hat trick or at least get to the extra. Oh, my God. I was going to say get to overtime to get the extra point, but Philip don't know how to say his name. He pretty much puts us into the postseason. I hope I did my math right because I'm going to look stupid if we miss. There it is, 98 points, and that is a postseason date, but with who? Who do we have in round number one? Another matchup with Tampa? I'd love to get our revenge against Tampa. I'd absolutely love it. And who do we got in round number one? It is the Florida Panthers, a team that we just beat, who, yes, they have 50 wins on the regular season. So this one is going to be a very, very tough first round opponent for the second year in a row. Matty Barzell, 91 points, not bad at all. That is one less than last year, but he seemed to score a little more this year. He decided to stop passing so much. I mean, he's still got 64 apples, but that is a huge year for Matty Barzell. He has been basically a point-per-game player since coming to Quebec. He is a monster. Conrad Stastny, 44 goals, not terrible, 86 points. His lowest point total ever, actually. But we're in the postseason, not going to worry about about it. Jesper Bratt, 66 points. That is a career high. 25 goals. Thanks for coming. Morgan Riley with 62. I know that's not a career high because he had 72 in 2018, but a very, a very good year for Morgan Riley, plus 21. Sammy Blay with 60 points, 87 overall, 17 points less than last year, but still a very, a very good year nonetheless. Jaden Schwartz with 57. Philip don't know how to say his name with 54. And then it really drops off. But I mean, to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players with over 50 points, that's pretty impressive. And then Lucas Raymond finishes his sophomore year with 29 points, which I believe is less than he had in his rookie year. But not going to worry about it. It's all good. Everything is in place right now. The plan is in place. And we're executing, not perfectly, but we're doing okay. Hampus Lindholm has 27 points. That's not bad. Nick Bugstad, 26. Adam Moore. Lowry. Having a look at Nick Suzuki here, he ended up having five points in what was 19 games. An even rating, four penalty minutes. Not terrible for a third liner. Not that bad at all. Adam Larson with 20. Adam Fox. Nasty Nas. He was a minus three. Nine goals, nine helpers for 18 points. Brendan Lemieux had 12 goals. I think that was the exact same amount of goals he had last time, but he had nine points in 57 games. So there you go for Brendan Lemieux. And Ty Smith had three and 10 for 13. Now, how about the tendies? How about the goalies here? Askarov was 12 and 6. He's still a 79. And there you go. UC Soros kind of picked it up there. 35 and 20. I want to do a few things here. I want to check out Sammy Niku. He had 12 points in 58 games with the New York Rangers. There you go. And then I want to check out, obviously, uh, where is he? Jesse Pugliarvi. Let's see how he did. So we had three points in 19 games. So definitely 100% confirmed that Suzuki is a much better player. Obviously, I'm partially joking there. Now, having a look at all skaters here, only three players with over 100 points. Maybe scoring is a little bit down. Oh, actually, wait, I'm only looking at right wingers. My bad. There should be quite a few more with over 100 points. Yep, there you go. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 players with over 100 points. Okay, scoring 
scoring is definitely up. And Kyle freaking Korea had 121 points but 79 goals. Almost breaks Gretzky's record. Holy, that is insane. 79, almost a goal per game. How you doing, Kyle Korea? Jesus, he is quite the player. Uh, Bo Alfredson with 54, 121 points. Lafleur and Anthony Ward all had 60. Vincenzo was very close. He had 59. Valerie Chubby Chubasov with 54. He loved to see it. And then Agency, he finished there with 52. Not quite the Rocket Richard Trophy winning season I thought he was going to have, but still not bad at all. Looks like playing with Kyle Correa makes Ricard Raquel a 100-point player. Makes sense. Game-winning goals. Max Leffler had 10 power play goals. Kyle Correa had 32 power play goals. How you doing? 43 power play points. Morgan Riley with six shorthanded points. Led the entire league in shorthanded points. That's awesome. And who led the league in fights? Zane Sackick and Nasty Nas. Oh man, living up to his name, getting nasty out there. 25 fights in his rookie year. That's pretty impressive. I did not expect him to be dropping the gloves. What's his fighting skill at? It's got to be pretty decent. His fighting skill is only 73, but I mean, he's trying out there. I don't know how many he's winning, but he's definitely trying. Have a quick look at the Yager brothers here, and they were 1-2 and two in scoring. Trevor Yager had 40 goals, and Lucas had 31, but he's a minus 20 over there in Long Island. Sorry about that. That sucks. Jared Anderson Dolan, Brocco, Lundstrom, those guys were the runners-up. I guess Lucas Yager would technically be a runner-up, because it looks like Trevor is going to take home the Calder trophy unless there is a crazy rookie goalie and I don't think they're gonna give it to Mackenzie Blackwood so you can pretty much take the Calder home there Mr. Yager. Thanks for watching I will see you guys in the first round when we go up against the Florida Panthers. They got Jokinen, they got Barkov, Huberto, watch out for these guys. I'll see you guys in round number one.